Um, another thing is that you know the way that development happens in Ireland, it tends to be large development sites. There isn't that much investment in the people who live on the site. So whether uh, whether uh, some of the NAMA sites should be turned over to housing associations cooperative, where the people who actually live there would have more of an investment in what's being developed. Perhaps some of the large sites could again be broken down, uh, rather than the, there was a whole uh, accretion of very large sites, but now of course with one owner, which I suppose is the government, ultimately those sites could be released in smaller parts, and people could start to have an investment in, in in uh, developing a, a home as a place to live. That has a, uh, in Germany, actually. That know. happens, of course, a lot in Germany, and I'm going to, I think in Tübingen, uh, it happened extensively. It happens here, I think, Clot Jordan here in Ireland. I mean, there are models for it. It's happened a lot in Canada. You know, it's, it's not a new model, but it is, it is that idea of, of you kind of have an investment in where you live rather than you just buy something to turn over. Um, also, again, there's a lot of land here. Could the government use this as a way to investigate model farms, model schools, model housing? So rather than just saying, oh dear, what are we going to do with all this? Maybe there's an opportunity here to do some of the things we couldn't afford to do over the past 10 years. So could Ireland you know, pave the way so for some best practice in land development? I mean, now with these new agreements as well in Copenhagen, there's probably new models of energy use that we need to think about, uh, self-sustaining communities. Is there a possibility, could we trade some of the sites with other countries, you know, if they have something we need, we, we have something like lots of rain or something like that they need, you know, so is there a possibility there? And then I suppose the long term is, have we, is there something that we can learn from all of this so that going forward that the same mistakes aren't repeated and probably this it might be the most important thing. So um, I'm coming up to the map again, this shows up on the map here. So one of the things that has struck us over the years is that a lot of the problems, it seems, in, in forward planning in this country seems to be that local authorities don't have a stable uh, tax base and therefore there isn't the funding necessarily available. Sometimes decisions are made because of development levies. So if we just reintroduce property taxes or rates, give the local authorities again a stable tax in income so you don't have this complete collapse when the property market fails and also I suppose there's a certain extent that if, if you own something as, as, as a population, if, you know, if we pay rates to the local authority or pay taxes, then in a way that local authority is accountable to us as well. Um, another thing is that um, it, there seems to be an obsession here with uh, what, is, you know, what is the price of a home. And, and a house no longer seems to be something that's a, uh, a home, a place to live. It seems to be a commodity, something that's flipped over. So I don't know how this one gets revised, but you know, there does seem to be this need to rethink about places where we live as homes. Do you want to live in this place and not necessarily as a commodity? What we, we also, someone told us, I don't know if it's correct, that like in Sweden, in Stockholm, you actually cannot buy apartments for investment. You actually live in the, those apartments. So there, there is a kind of a more sustainable approach to, to a comp um, 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 purchasing. Yeah, and, and I suppose the other thing is, it also seems that there wa isn't an aligning of tax policy with spatial planning. So perhaps tax incentives are to live in a place rather than just to invest in a place. Because there's the bizarre situation here where you can buy a place to live and, the, and a, an investor gets a tax relief on it, whereas somebody living there doesn't. Um, and then uh, centers of excellence. I mean, we were, we were also wondering, what is it that we want to associate with Ireland? It seemed to be this kind of crazy property boom, but if you think of what you, know, you associate with, say, literature, can we build on this? Can we use some of these sites to build up universities and not just as maybe uh, about profit, or, uh, profit, but about trying to make centers of excellence? Could we invite in universities from around the world to maybe build on some of the very strong courses that we currently have, and could some of this land be released to allow some of that to happen? And then the final thing we said, you know, it's not all bad. Everything that happened in the last 10 years hasn't been bad. There have been some really, really good things. We think that the things that have stood up are things like infrastructure investment, so the Lewis, the train upgrades, cycle lanes, bus lanes, I think in, in the city, public spaces that, uh, you know, uh, down at uh, Grand Canal Dock, 
all of these things, you can see there's a value there for years to come. So I, I suppose we uh, also think there's a concern that in the desire to throw everything out, that we throw out all the good things as well. But there were some very good things that happened. And w what we're hoping that going forward, that we can build on those good things and um, maybe learn from the things that didn't work so well. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>